Fidelis Care offers quality, affordable health coverage for children and adults of all ages and at all stages of life. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. Call 1-888-FIDELIS or visit FidelisCare.org. Hello everybody and welcome to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Each and every week at this time we're going to take a look at our local college sports programs. We begin this week with the honor roll of local college athletes brought to you by M&T Bank. At M&T Bank we're listening, learning and working hard to understand what's important to Western New York. It's what we've been doing since 1856. M&T Bank, understanding what's important. In at number three, it's Peter Girardi of St. John Fisher. He had a strong showing at the Brockport Early Season Track and Field Invitational. He took first in the 400 meters, breaking a Fisher School record in the process, then was part of a first place finish in the 4x400 relay. In at number two this week, Jonathan Haas of Brockport Wrestling won the 125 pound weight class, the New Standard Invitational in York, Pennsylvania. That's one week after winning the same weight class in the B division at the New York State Championships in Ithaca. A good start to his junior season for the Spencerport grad. And topping the list, it's Conlon Keenan of the Geneseo hockey team. He is on a roll. The first-year player in Penfield native has 11 goals in 10 games with three assists for the fourth-ranked Knights. He has scored at least one goal in six straight games and has at least a point in eight of 10 games. Well, it is time now for our local college spotlight athlete of the week. He is a graduate of McQuaid and he chose to stay in the area to attend the University of Rochester. Now in his senior year, Zach Ayers is a team leader everyone can look up to. When you're as big as Zach Ayers, a lot of people, including yourself, expect big things from you on the basketball court. The 6'10 senior out of McQuaid has been a contributor for the Yellow Jackets his first three seasons, but heading into his final year, he knew he wanted to step it up. Um, I knew coming into this year that I needed to step into more of a leadership role, um, try and get the guys on the same page, make sure that we all knew what we were capable of uh, and how talented we really were. Uh, so that's been something that I've been working on day in and day out. and. Uh, just trying to, to lead more by example than anything else and I also knew that we lost some key guys last year, um, scorers, so I knew that in that field that's somewhere that I knew I could step up, um, so I've been trying to do that with our past couple games, especially when we have size advantages like we have, uh, especially this past weekend. So I think for me it's more just taking the shots that uh, that's right for our team and I think this year more than in the past uh, those shots have just happened to, to come from me than, than other people. He's been more of a perimeter player uh, who uses his length and, and I think he's kind of uh, really just uh, evolved into a more well-rounded player and really goes inside out for us this year and uh, you know his impact on the court is huge you know on both sides uh, just with his size and his presence you know he really allows us uh, to take some chances on the defensive end and you know, offensively he, he's a good player to play through because he's very unselfish and team first and uh, at 6'10 he's a very good passer. His contributions on the court aren't always going to show up on the stat sheet. He's taken more of a leadership role, not something that every player is willing to do, but one that Zach is very comfortable with. Sort of just being a senior for me uh, is a natural leadership position. Uh, stepping into senior year, it was just something that was expected, you know. Um, so I, I did my best to kind of think through what, where we needed to get better, you know, maybe help boost some, some of the younger guys' confidence. So it really, it's pretty natural to me, I think, uh, just kind of figuring out what the team needs and trying to fill in anywhere I can. For his coach, having someone like Zach leading the way is something of a luxury. And coming to this season with really something to improve uh, both on and off the court, he's really embraced the, his leadership role with this group and, you know, he takes it very seriously. He has a lot of pride in it and it certainly makes my job easier. Zach's senior season has got off to about as good a start as you could hope for. The Jackets recently cracked the top 25 in the nation and Zach came one missed shot away from setting a school record for best shooting percentage in a game, going 10 for 11 from the field. He's thrilled with the way things have started, but not totally surprised. Played with a lot of really good guys, really great players through the years. Um, this team this past year and this year have both been really tight-knit groups of guys. Uh, 
and last year we had a we had a really good season, something that we we knew we could build on coming into this year. So I think that helped a lot of our older guys uh, come into this year with a with a confidence, knowing that we could we could really do something special. So being here for four years, uh, playing in the program, um, it's given me a lot of a lot of confidence and a lot of experience along with uh, my fellow seniors and juniors. So I know that we we know what needs to be done for us to be as good of a team as we can be. It's shaping up as the kind of season that all those expectations might be realized. I, I think he just, you know, he, like I said, he's played uh, an important role, but uh, a little bit smaller role through his first three years. And I think he recognizes that this is his last chance to kind of have a big impact the way he, uh, you know, he, he planned. And you know, so far his senior year has been exactly that. When we return, J.C. DeLass welcomes RIT Volleyball's Jim Lotus into the coach's corner. And later on, Kim Burnson has our Scholar Athlete brought to you by Dave. We've got that and more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. As we head to break, here's a look at the Nazareth Athletes of the Week brought to you by Nazareth College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the Geneseo Athletes of the Week, brought to you by SUNY Geneseo. Welcome back. Thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Each and every week at this time, J.C. DeLass from WYSL Radio is going to help us get to know an area coach better with the Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. The Fidelis Care Coach's Corner is presented by Fidelis Care. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. This is JC DeLass with this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner, and our guest this week is Jim Lotus. He's the head women's volleyball coach at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Coach, you're the all-time leader in volleyball victories here at RIT. What would you say has been the secret to your success here? Uh, that's a really good question. I would say several things. One the type of student athlete we draw, obviously with the high academic institution, the level of play in the Liberty League, but also in the Empire right back when we were there, the ability to, to bring kids from everywhere. So obviously it's a national level recruiting tool, including international. So I think that diversity allows us to go get good, high quality Division three student athletes. This is your second stint at RIT. You've coached at a variety of levels, high school, college, Division one college mm -hmm. too. What brought you back to RIT? Uh, I, I jokingly say that uh, when I was here the first time, it was a part-time position. And I often said, you know, if it was full-time, would I have ever left? Now, there's some that would argue I probably would have because the ego had to see what you could go do. But I always said if it opened up at the right time and it was the right place, I enjoyed my time here. And it was a, a great fit for me, or at least I felt it was. And uh, so when it did happen, it was like, this is a neat opportunity. I wonder if I'll actually get a chance to do that again. And I'm very happy to be back. Coaching at a Division I level versus coaching Division III, is there a big difference in what it takes to succeed, or do the same coaching principles really apply no matter where you are? Uh, a lot of it is very similar. Obviously, the, the, the student athlete themselves is bigger, stronger, faster, so there's a little bit of that, but it's still, as far as my general philosophy, we train the same way I did there, it's just a little bit lower relative to the net, let's say, or a little bit slower relative to the student athlete, but it, it's the same principle, and then obviously here, Amongst like North Carolina or UB where we had some very good academics, it also has that piece that you don't always have at Division One or Two, but that we have here that you have that, that type of student athlete. You've talked a lot about academics. Is that really what you're looking for when you're recruiting for a student athlete at RIT? Academics first on the list? Yeah, I think, well, I, 
it's, it's fit, which then obviously is academics because we're at college. So I'd say we're looking at why should you be here? I think when I was younger, there was that stretch where you're, 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 you want to win everything, which not that we don't want to win, we really want to win. But I think we would maybe look at a kid and say, well, she's a great volleyball player, let's get her, and not always get the best fit. And I think we do a better job now of who belongs at RIT. And then also, will they take us where we want to go volleyball-wise? So I think as I've matured coaching, I've learned, you know, what are we looking for in the complete package of student-athlete, not just maybe for a stretch I was naive and it was, you know, I'm the volleyball coach, I'm worried about the athlete part. And I think you get older and see it's a big picture. Seems like the kids now more involved, not just high school volleyball, club teams and premier teams. Do you feel like you're getting better athletes now when you get to the college level? Uh, for sure. I think that uh, if you go back to when I was here my first time, 91 through 96, um, area volleyball was, was good, but just starting to come into its own. And now it's national level in Rochester and, and Buffalo. So you got area kids you can go. Everybody plays years round. So it's, it's just... The, the, the level you get comparatively is, is so much better. They've, they've been playing travel volleyball since seventh grade instead of in the early 90s. It was like, okay, they found volleyball in seventh grade. They didn't start traveling usually until they were like sophomores or maybe not at all. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thank you. And thank you for watching this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. Kim Burnson is up next with our scholar athlete and later on a look at a team at Brockport that likes to throw their weight around. We've got that and more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. Before we go to break, here's a look at the RIT Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the Rochester Institute of Technology. As we come back from break, here's a look at the SUNY Brockport Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the College of Brockport. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for our Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Dave, Digital Audio Visual Environments. Where can you go to get expert advice and installation on TV, sound systems, and automation for your home, car, or business? Come see Dave. Digital Audio Visual Environment. Come see Dave.com. This week, our scholar athlete is Nazareth senior Michaela Souls. As a starting midfielder for the Golden Flyers soccer team, Michaela was a leader on the field in her last season. She earned Empire 8 All Star honors two years in a row and was named first team All East Region by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. On top of that, she balances a tough workload while majoring in physical therapy. For her work on the field and off, Nazareth's Michaela Souls is our scholar athlete, brought to you by Dave Digital Audio Visual Environments. Now with a look at our college calendar, here's Dave Yates. Here's our local college calendar for the week ahead. It's coming up on Christmas break, but there are still a few games to watch for, like this basketball matchup on Tuesday, as the U of R hosts Union College at 6 p.m. Friday, the Nazareth men's basketball team is on the road in Pennsylvania playing Lycoming College. The next day, they'll be in Williamsport to play against Potsdam. Saturday, the Fisher men's team hosts SUNY Cortland at the Bobby Wanzer Court. And finally, next Sunday, has the Roberts Wesleyan women and men playing some basketball, with the men up first at 1 p.m. versus Slippery Rock, followed by the women's game at 3 as they host St. St. Anselm College. That is our college sports beat calendar. Now here is how some of our Section 5 alums are doing at colleges outside of Rochester. It's a segment we call Postcards from College. Anthony Lamb, recent graduate of Greece Athena, scored 23 points in his college debut for Vermont and after nine games is averaging 10.8 points per game and 5.8 rebounds for the Catamounts. Bishop County grad Chinosa Oboko transferred to St. Bonaventure from Syracuse this year. The graduate student is playing sparingly for the Bonnies, averaging two points per game. Carissa Birthright from Greece Odyssey is in her sophomore year at the College of St. Rose and is averaging nine points a game for the Golden Knights. And Webster Schrader's Valerie Palermo was named to the Atlantic 10 Academic All-Conference Team. The cross-country star at Duquesne finished in third place in the Atlantic 10 Championships in this, her senior year. And those are our postcards from college. Coming up next, it's our honor roll of teams, and later on, the Golden Eagles showcase their strength at the Brockport Early Season Invitational. We'll explain what that's all about and have more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns.
As we head to break, here's a look at the Roberts Wesleyan Athletes of the Week, brought to you by Roberts Wesleyan College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the St. John Fisher Athletes of the Week brought to you by St. John Fisher College. Welcome back and thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Here is our honor roll of local college teams. We're going to start off at number three. It's the U of R men's basketball squad. Seen earlier this episode, they are now 8-0 after beating Fisher and Nazareth in the Mark's Pizzeria Crosstown Shootout. Senior Mac Montague was named tournament MVP, and Zach Ayers had two key baskets late in the win versus Naz. At number two, it's Geneseo women's basketball. They're 6-0 on the year after a 48-40 win over Oneonta. They were led by seniors Bridget Ryan and Katie Durand, who both scored 12. And topping the list, the University of Rochester Women's Swimming and Diving. They won their eighth straight Liberty League championship. Danielle New was named Diver of the Year. Monica Jackson is the Liberty League Rookie of the Year. And U of R was honored with the coaching staff of the year as well. And now it's time for our Spotlight Team of the Week. The Shot Put, the Weight Throw, two track and field events unlike the rest. And at the College at Brockport, a chance for a group of women to come together as a team. Watching athletes throw at a track and field event, and it looks like each one is doing it on their own. And when it comes to actually competing, that's the case. But there's plenty that goes on away from the meet that makes this more of a team sport than you could imagine. It's more important than you would think. I mean, like, we all get in the circle and perform by ourselves, but we've, we have the support of the whole team, which is really nice. And we practice as a team, we eat as a team, like, it's, it's a lot team. Well, we really do try to push that team atmosphere because track is always misconstrued as such an individual sport. Um, yeah, you do compete individually inside the sport, but we want that team and family atmosphere like all of your traditional team sports would have because it does allow them to compete tighter as a unit and as a group or family if you will so we're always together like we need to help each other in the weight room help each other get through practices because sometimes they can go like super long so like we're always there like cheering each other on making each other feel comfortable like laughing helping each other through hard times so we're pretty close team and it's really good for us heading into the first meet of the season there are different expectations for the results this one is a great chance to see where you stand and get a feel for what you need to work on. I'm really happy with that, what I did today considering finals week is coming up and I'm pretty tired and pretty stressed. And like, we've only practiced shot a couple of times. We've been focusing on weight throw more in practice. So I'm, I'm pleased. Yeah, we've been working really hard as a team together. So we've, like today we made five, I think it was five girls um, went to finals and we've been pushing ourselves all year in the gym at practice so we're really happy with how shot puts went so far so of course there's also the challenge of competing and then not being back in action for another six weeks plus the holiday break thrown in between trying to come back focused can be difficult we do hope that they're going to go home and stay disciplined and diligent in their in their lifting and uh, they travel with their shoes everywhere so I mean all they need is some flat space to get some turns in and practice some technique um, but they'll go home with a lot of video from today and they have to do a lot of self-reflection a lot of note-taking a lot of self-study if you will on how to correct what went wrong today I mean it is tough but it's nice to know that this is just like a starting meet and you do get your first mark and then it's always something to work up after break and you know you really have to kick your butt into gear when you come back for intercession that you have a meet four days after you're back. 
It also helps for this group of Golden Eagles to have someone like Jessica with them. Even though she's just a sophomore, she had a great deal of success in her first year, making it to the NCAAs in the discus last spring. We do look to Jess as a leader because she did have such success as a freshman. So she's been to those bigger, high-profile meets to where she should be able to bring the mentality to our younger kids of, okay, like this is just like practice, this is just like any other meet, act like you've been here, and we've practiced for this, so let's go. And she just has that right mindset. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And a special thanks to our sponsors, including Fidelis Care, for making the college sports beat possible. We'll see you back here next week.